Why is up everybody? I'm no Lex Given here with your afternoon snap and today I wanted to showcase my favorite Sasquatch deck right now and if we take a look on untapped.gg at the most played Sasquatch lists at the time of this recording, this first list here is going to be the one that we're going to be discussing throughout this video and I'm just going to make that a little bit bigger here. Let's switch to this view. This is is an archetype that I had not really experimented with before this week. This kind of like squirrel girl, it's a, it's really a squirrel girl deck. You use squirrel girl to power out a mockingbird and then you use killmonger to kill the squirrel girl to power out a death. And this is a deck that already plays Mysterio because it's really good with mockingbird. So Sasquatch is kind of a nice little fit into this deck. However, this is not the exact list that I'm playing. So I'm actually running this list right here, which is slightly less common but puts in Lady Deathstrike instead of Nico. Or it's more fair to say that it cuts Nico rather than cutting Lady Deathstrike because this deck was a deck last week before Sasquatch released and now it's just, okay, how are you going to fit the Sasquatch in there? And most players have decided to cut Lady Deathstrike, but this video is actually going to just be an ode to Lady Deathstrike showcasing all of the cool things that Lady Deathstrike can destroy and why it is probably worth a slot in your Sasquatch decks. Also, as a reminder, if you are a subscriber to the channel, any comment that you make enters you into a giveaway to win credits, premium mystery variants, or 1,000 gold in Marvel Snap. So make sure to leave me a comment and hit that subscribe button. Lady Deathstrike has some obvious synergies with the deck, namely being able to destroy the sentries the void. However, there are some drawbacks to playing both Lady Deathstrike and Mysterio, because Lady Deathstrike will be able to destroy the real Mysterio, which is something that you have to watch out for, and sometimes it's just something that you you have to play into. The biggest reason to play Lady Deathstrike is to destroy opposing Mobius and Mobius. This deck has a bunch of cards that get cheaper, Mockingbird, Sasquatch, and Death, that whole bottom row there, so Mobius can really be a problem card for this deck, which means I think you will want at least one way to deal with Mobius, and Lady Deathstrike is a great way that is synergistic with the other cards in your deck. And even though Mockingbird is kind of taken out here by the peak and Death is not as powerful as it could otherwise be, being able to play that free death on the final turn is going to be good. We sacrificed a lot of power to make this play possible too. We destroyed our Killmonger and the real Mysterio, but now we can play for both of these non-Professor X locations, and regardless, we will beat my opponent's Cannonball, which also costs my opponent six energy thanks to the peak. There are a lot of other things that Lady Deathstrike can destroy. In this game, we see a strong guy, a Morbius, and a Dracula. I've also used it to destroy Quinjet, Elsa, and even a Werewolf by Night. So there's a lot of really powerful abilities that you can use Lady Deathstrike to blow up. And in this game, I actually can't throw Lady Deathstrike into the big house, but there is still an interesting decision to be made here because I can either play a Nihilus and give my opponent all of this negative power over in Jotunheim, or I can play Lady Deathstrike, eat up that negative power, and destroy my opponent's Dracula at the same time. So it's kind of a tricky decision, but there is a lot that uh, destroying Dracula can do here. It might uh, turn off my opponent's strong guy and make my opponent's Morbius less powerful as well. And Lady Deathstrike is one of the few cards in the game that can actually interact with Dracula, which is really cool, really powerful. And uh, I guess the other one is uh, actually a new release here, Red Guardian, uh, being pretty strong for its ability to interact with Dracula. But Lady Deathstrike is ultimately going to be what I decide to go with here. 
year, and despite it destroying a bunch of what was basically power on my opponent's side of the board, considering the opportunity cost would have been passing that power to my opponent with Annihilus, this is actually going to wind up being the right play for me here, and it is going to work out that we still get it done in Jotunheim and in Stark Tower. This is the deck where Lady Deathstrike is probably at her best. I'm playing up against a Cerebro 3 deck here, where every single card in my opponent's deck dies to Lady Deathstrike, unless of course they have Cerebro pumping up their cards. But if Cerebro is pumping up their cards, then I can destroy Cerebro, and in this case also destroy my opponent's Mystique, and my opponent is kind of in an awkward place this game, because Nidavellir is a really terrible location for a Cerebro 3 deck. Also, again here, I am destroying my actual Mysterio. These are the sacrifices we gotta make, but this is a really, really powerful play to be able to destroy the cards my opponent's deck is built around. My opponent does have a really cheeky play here though, which we'll see in just a moment as they do indeed play to Nidavellir. It's not gonna wind up being enough, but uh, good for them, A for effort. They're gonna Shang-Chi my Annihilus before turning off Nidavellir with a Scarlet Witch, which will allow them to otherwise get that Cerebro bonus but of course, Cerebro is gone. It's actually a really interesting matchup because they can use Cerebro to save their three power cards if they have priority and stuff like that. Uh, and again, the big house being an awkward card for Lady Deathstrike because that would keep, that would be a great place for my opponent to throw their Cerebro where I can't Lady Deathstrike it. But this game, we do have Mojo World as the center location, and I kind of feel like using Lady Deathstrike 1 to kill a Ravona, which is going to make it harder for my opponent to play Cerebro and Mystique on the final turn, but also just destroying two of my opponent's cards, maybe even three at this center location, is going to make it really hard for my opponent to win Mojo World. Yeah, we're going to destroy two Sentinels and a Ravona here. So now we are going to have a pretty easy time winning in Mojo World, and it's going to cost my opponent full energy if they want to play Cerebro, right? Not quite full energy because of Elysium, uh, but either way, my opponent actually makes an Iron Man copy with Mystique over into the big house. I put another card into Mojo World just in case, and then Death plus my Mysterio is going to be enough to win the big house and take my opponent for those final cubes. And we've seen a few locations that are bad for Lady Deathstrike, but I wanted to showcase one location that was pretty good for my Lady Deathstrike and it just wound up being, I think, the sickest Deathstrike that I've ever been able to do because Thunderbolt's tower reduced the power of my opponent's Omega Red and Punisher and my opponent is leaning heavily on having two cards in that center location to activate Miss Marvel, and I'm blowing up both of those cards this turn, which means my opponent is most likely not going to receive that Miss Marvel buff, and I had no clue how much they were actually relying on it here. They move over their negative power cards into New York, which they've already lost, makes sense, and they don't replace anything in Thunderbolt's tower, so we win that location, and it turns out my opponent, this final turn, played an onslaught to double up on that Miss Marvel, but of course, there's nothing for Miss Marvel to pump up. That's going to be it for me today. Thank you guys very much for watching. I'm no Lux Given. Peace.